Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. This is going to be quick. What I did is I measured how deep I want to go with this so I don't go through the bottom. So I put a little piece of blue tape on there and turn this on. And let me get my tool rest out of the way. That could hurt if I got my fingers caught in that. Anyway, just going to drill that deep. Nice, simple thing to do. Now we're all set up again, and one other reason I like using this easy wood tool when I do this, see how thick the shaft is on this? It resists vibration really well. The other one's got a thinner shaft, and it's great for delicate stuff, but you can see I can overhang this this far right now. It's got a maximum mark right there to help you out. So this will go deep enough to do the, the cup on the uh, goblet without any vibration. So I'm gonna turn this on. We've got our steady center back up again. Pick up our speed. You can actually see in there, I'm having a hard time because it's like got an octopus in the way here or something. Anyway, bring this in. This has to be perfectly level or you'll get in trouble. Now one thing when you're hauling, well one thing when you're hauling, don't step on the emergency stop. <laughs> there we go, kick that out of the way. Um, is really it's a bad idea to put your head down like this because if you get a catch, where's that handle gonna go, right? It's gonna whack you. I've lost a few brain cells that way already, but I'm trying to do it so I can see inside, see where I am, because like I said, I got a few things in the way here. We'll just go until we hear it touch. There we go. Yeah, I can actually see it in the viewfinder. Of course, it's upside down and backwards. Oh, well, that doesn't affect my turning style at all. So I'm just gently working this away, and I'm just gonna match the outer curve with this inside curve. When you get down to that bottom, you're gonna see that that's where the uh, drill bit left a, left an indentation. You can't quite see the tip of the tool there, but you just wanna be very careful when you get to that intersection. You hear that? A little vibration from touching the left side of that circle and the front side of that circle. So you have two points of contact at that point, so it's gonna be a little more drag, a little more noise. Let me blow this out real quick. <coughs> and I'm gonna try to do this on the fly. You might laugh at me for this. We'll bring this down, we're gonna adjust that, move the light a little bit here. Again, it's like kind of like taking an octopus for a walk, getting all this set up. There we go. Now maybe we'll see the top of the tool when we go in there. There it is. You can see how I'm trying to stay right on center level. And that's how you get that nib out in the bottom. You get below it, you raise the tip up, and you work it away like so. So you put the tip below it, you raise it up, and it gets rid of that nib. Anyway, once I get this as smooth and as thin as I want it, then we're gonna start working on making the captive rings. Now we're ready to start turning the intersection between the cup of the goblet and the stem. And if you notice, this is nice and smooth. I went ahead and sanded this off camera because that's like watching paint dry. But I sanded this to 400 grit and it is really nice. You could go 240 if you want to, but since this is gonna be hopefully an heirloom quality piece, because that marriage is gonna last a long time. By the way, I didn't even mention this to you. The reason I'm doing this is kind of personal. My niece Brandy is getting married to Jake this week. And so I have made the cup for their wedding. And hopefully everything will stay intact and it will last hundreds of years or something like that. Anyway, turn this on. We're at a slow speed. You know, steady rest is gone. I really don't need it now. Gonna bring this up. And you can see right here is where I'm gonna do the intersection between the stem and the cup. So 
Actually, just for ease of use, I'm going to grab my parting tool and move some wood quickly. I don't want to go hog wild and go way back here because that'll get me in trouble. Because I need that wood. So by moving this down here this way, I save myself a little bit of time and effort. Because I just want to get the notch established. So we're going to come here. I can't even see what I'm doing. There we go. That's better. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to come in here and I'm going to let the shape of the tool make the intersection for me. So you can see I'm rubbing the bevel, I come in right here, you see how that point makes that shape? That's the intersection right there. And then we'll come like so and just move a little bit of wood out of the way. And so we'll swing this like so and we've got this little perfect intersection that the tool made for us. Whoops, until you do that. Get the bevel going exactly where you want. You can push in, then you can pull out like so. You want to make this cut so clean that you don't have to sand it because you can't sand it. That's the issue with this. You want the tool to make the entire shape and you want to make it beautifully. So I got the tool really flat, just like it would an easy wood, just to scrape that away. So that's as good as I'm going to go because it's giving me enough room now to start making the rings. So I'm going to introduce you to a neat tool. Now I'm getting my stuff ready here because ring tools are very interesting tools. Uh, start off with, this is my old ring tool. I think it's made by Hamlet and it is a wonderful tool, but really you can only make one size ring and I kind of botched it up. I didn't uh, pay attention to the instructions on how to sharpen it. So it really cuts well this way, but this way I screwed it up and I think I'm kind of running out of metal. So I went to my uh, local woodcraft and picked up a Robert Sorby ring tool, which is very cool. Because if you notice, I've got one, two, three, four different sizes of rings I can make. That is neat because I don't have to shape the ring freehand, so to speak. But anyway, it, it's a neat little setup I've got. And we're going to go with this size. I could tell you what that is. But I think it's like a quarter inch. But what they want you to do is I'm going to find, hey, we've got a pencil is they say take the, um, the uh, cutter and actually put it up here. And so I'm, I'm going to make a mark right here. That's the edge of the left side of the ring, okay? So what I'm going to do with that is turn this on and turn it off real quick. Okay, and then we come over here and eh, here we are. I'm going to take my parting tool and you can see I've already parted the wood down a ways because I want to make my rings smaller than the base of the cup because if they fell off, I don't know what that would do to the wedding or to the, to the marriage. <laughs> they break, the marriage is gone. But if the rings fall off, I'm not sure what that means. Anyway, so we're going to just take the parting tool to the outside here and we're going to come down a little ways and just make a clearance area for the tool to work. Now think of it this way, you can make as many rings as you want or try as many times as you want, but you're limited by how much wood you have left here. So don't waste your opportunities. <laughs> you could run out of room. So now I need to, on this, since I had me turn it sideways, I've got to actually take this now and rotate it to be about like so. So it's kind of at an angle. Let me turn this around so you can see it better. So it's at an angle right now. So that's going to help me do the curving entry cuts first. And then we'll turn it one more time to make the final cut on it. You have to have the tool rest back a little bit so you're off that screw set. But anyway, you can see how this is touching right there. And you want to trail it down a bit. And I'm going in. And now you can see it's starting to shape that ring really fast. All right, this is so cool. You want to use a light touch. You don't want to force it. So you can see as I rock this back and forth, you can see how it's making the curve of the ring. Really neat, huh? Let's stop that and see how it looks. Wow, that is good. So the next step, they say, is to now take this and loosen it. And now it's going to be aiming right in line like this, OK? So if I can get to tighten and do that I'll, without slipping, I'll be lucky. Here we go. That's cool. Because what you're doing now is you're going to make a cut that goes under the lip of the ring, but not all the way through, right? You're not going to do that until you're ready to finish it up. So now I can bring this in here, right like so. And it cuts in. 
and once I touch that little side right there, okay, now I'm perfectly halfway through on that. Now, this is where it gets finicky for those of us who have fumbly fingers. But anyway, they want you to take this off now. And we have to flip things. Oops, double flip. That goes this way. That goes on there. And I notice one thing, this is coated with something. And when I first tried to do this, I couldn't get the threads to engage. And it just took a little wiggling around to get the threading cleared out. And you can see I'm still wiggling around there. But it didn't hurt anything. It was just that coating that got in the way. There we go. So this is a cool tool. And I've been wanting to use one for quite a while. And I'm glad I did because the fact that you can make four different size rings without having to really think about it is really neat. So we're back at that side angle again. And so we're going to start trying to blend this in a bit. And you can see I'm too wide, so I'm going to take my parting tool here and get rid of that excess. Get it out of the way. Because this tool's not meant to move a lot of wood, just a little bit. So we're going to tilt it down. Come in there. There it is. So we got our curve going. Bring it up a little bit to make the cut on the side. That's cutting on the side. Looks good. So, move it one more time. And I think I ridged it just a little bit, so I'm gonna have to go back and clean that up, but sandpaper might do that. This is walnut after all, and it's very nice stuff. So, there we go. Okay, now we're back to where we're straight up and down again, okay? So now, I want to come in there a little bit, establish that some. What I don't wanna do is I don't wanna go all the way through. Now, because if I went all the way through, sanding the outside would be really tough. This is tiny. I'm not supposed to breathe this dust, but I'm just going to show you real quick without having to go through the effort of putting on my mask and all that junk. I'm going to start at, let me see what I got here. That's 180 grit, fine. I'm going to come in here and you can see already I just took off that little, little nick I made in there. But if you sand this now, your life would be a lot easier because trying to hand sand a ring is tough. But again, if you do this, make sure you put on breathing protection. Don't do as I do, do as I say. I think that's it. Anyway, so let's just assume that that is beautifully sanded now. Okay, so what's the next step? Bring this back up. Always turn the lathe off before you move the tool rest. <clears throat> back to that do as I whatever thing statement. Okay, we gotta pick up our speed here. And now, here comes the final cut. We're gonna come in here, engage. Gonna turn the tool, press in. Ha! Look at that. We got our first captive ring. Isn't that neat looking? So anyway, we've got one more to make. We'll probably tape this up to the side here and then part that one off. And once I get two of them made, then I'm gonna show you how you actually sand the inside of the ring. Okay, now why do you need to sand why do you need to sand the inside of the rings? Well think about it. When they're on the stem like this, you can see all the way through. So you want them to be as pretty as possible. And right now they kind of got a flat edge, a little tear out and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do over here, which has worked best for me, is I actually took some double stick tape, double-sided stuff right here. I turned this down a little bit, wrapped the double stick around it. Then I took some micro mesh and wrapped it on that so it's holding. You can see I've got this ring taped off over here. I'm gonna turn this down low and turn this on. And let, literally, the way we sand this is just by doing this, by moving this around and just getting the edge right. And you can kind of let it play through your fingers a little bit, and that'll smooth it out too. I got 240 grit on here, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be enough to do what I need to do. So you can see it starts to really shape the ring into a ring now. And you can actually worry some areas around. You go to the side a little bit too if you have to. So. It's a real fast way of doing this. I can't imagine doing this by hand. <laughs> okay, now that we've sanded the rings, I'm just taping them off to get them out of the way. And it's a simple process from here on out. We're just gonna do some spindle turning. <laughs> Reminds me of my bicycle when I was a kid. That won't hurt anything. Ow, 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 ow. No, it won't hurt anything. Anyway, I'm just gonna pick the speed up a little bit. And we're just going to start turning the stem. And like I said, it's just like any spindle turning. You want to work your way back a little bit at a time. And then we'll work our way down to that foot. Just make sure you make the spindle nice and thin and delicate so it's a really pretty look. Oh, 
Okay, now we've got the stem, <laughs> stem turn, and that's a simple thing to do. But on the foot, I want to do one little thing, is I want to actually arch this up and then make a little transition that matches that one right there. So that's the little bit of fancy stuff I'm going to do. <laughs> it's very simple, real easy to do. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit right here. We're reaching out way over the tool rest, so you just got to be careful about the angle of your tool. And then right here, I'm putting my thumb by here <laughs> behind here so it doesn't skate back. Doggone walnut dust. And now we're making our arch or our dome like so. And I'm watching up top and that matches with that one there. So we're going to come in here. We're going to make our little intersection like so. This is cool. Now once I get this done the way I want it, all I'm going to do is sand a little bit and then we're going to part it off. And then we'll talk about what type of finish to use on something like this. Well, now that you have this sanded and off the lathe, what finish do you use? Well, typically I would say use mineral oil because it's renewable, it's non-toxic, you can drink this bottle, might not make you feel real good, but it's not gonna hurt you. Well, the other thing is this one I finished with Wipe on Poly. I want it to last a very long time. Now that might sound a little controversial, but think about it, there are no lead products in our finishes anymore. So if you let this finish completely cure, which takes about 30 days, this is completely safe to drink out of. And speaking about drinking out of, when you give this to whoever you're going to give it to, make sure you tell them, don't let any liquid sit in here for over an hour. And if you're gonna wash it, don't put it in the dishwasher, just hand wash it with mild soapy water and then dry it off. Well, that is how you make a captive ring goblet. Captive, what a weird term for something that's going into a wedding, huh? Anyway, uh, so until next time, keep turning and good luck, Brandy and Jake. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.